What's up, math fans? You're probably so good at the original three trig functions, which would be sine, cosine, and tangent, and Sokotoa just reminds you of the formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. You're probably good with those three functions, and then you got a little bored, so now you're ready to learn the reciprocal trigonometric functions. And reciprocal just means you're flipping a fraction. If the fraction was A over B, it is now B over A, and you knew that already. So here's three new formulas that they look even more complicated than they are. The cosecant of an angle is just one over the sine of that angle. The secant of an angle is one over the cosine of that angle, and the cotan of an angle is one over the tangent of an angle. Now, one over something, you don't even have to do the math. One over something really just means take whatever that thing was and flip it, all right? This notation, cosecant, comes from cosecant. This notation, secant, comes from the actual word secant, and cotangent is short, shortened by writing C-O-T. So that's just shorthand. Um, so what? when I first learned it, I remember thinking cosecant sounds like cosine. Shouldn't it be the reciprocal of cosine? But it's not, it's actually a little bit counterintuitive here. Cosecant is the reciprocal or the flip of sine, and then secant is the reciprocal or flip of cosine. Cotangent actually makes perfect sense. It's the reciprocal of tangent. So, just to illustrate my point even further, one over something. So, think about uh, one over two thirds. One over something really means one divided by that something. And if you learned way back, when you're dividing fractions, you actually multiply by the reciprocal. I call that keep change flip. So one can be rewritten as a fraction, one over one times, let me flip the two thirds as three halves, and guess what, that's now, one times three is three, one times two is two, and it's three halves. So one over something really just means flip it, that's it. So all these three things, I'm just saying flip it. Flip what? Flip whatever you need. So in this question, if sine of theta is 5 over 13, find the secant of theta. What am I asking you to do? I'm asking you to find the secant of a given angle. In order for me to know the secant, all I need to know is the cosine and then just flip it. That's what all of this means. If I were asking you for the cotan, you would just need to know the tan and then just flip it. So for me to know the secant, I need to first know the cosine, and then I'm gonna flip it. Cosine, theta, and then flip it. But the given information doesn't give me cosine, the given information gives me sine. Depending on your question, the given information might give you cosine or it might make you more complicated. The reason I made it more complicated was to demonstrate that all you need is one fact, and you can find all six functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, all six of them. Um, so now that I know sine, I can actually fill out my diagram. And they might not even give you a diagram. You can imagine it or draw it yourself. So sine I know is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is five, hypotenuse is 13. I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that's five squared plus B squared equals 13 squared. And if you work this out, you'll find out that B is, uh, if I subtract 25 from both sides, that gives me 144, so B alone is 12. So I would put a 12 there. Now, if you're labeling your sides, if this is theta, there is opposite over there. Here's hypotenuse, of course, the longest side opposite the right angle. And next to my theta is adjacent. So if I was curious, and nobody asked me this, well actually, I need to know it first. The cosine of theta, is 12 over 13. See, I knew one thing, I now I already know two things. 12 over 13. So if you need to know the secant, I just flip it and I'm done. If you have to rationalize, if there was a radical here and I had to rationalize, I would do that too, but I don't have to in this particular case. So the secant of theta is equal to 13 over 12 and I'm done. What if they asked for cosecant? So cosecant is what? It's the flip of the sine. Well, that would have been straightforward, real easy, because you already told me the sine is 5, 13. Flip, 13 over 5. 13 
over five. Um, what if they confused you and asked you for the cotan? What if they asked for the cotan of theta? Well, then you would have to first figure out the tangent of theta, which is opposite over adjacent, five over 12, and then flip that giving you 12 over five. So again, once you know one thing, you know all six functions. Um, some people don't learn it or don't teach it like this. They don't waste time finding the sign and then flipping it. All they do is just flip all the formulas. So instead of saying opposite over hypotenuse, they immediately say hypotenuse over opposite. For this, they'll immediately say adjacent, uh, hypotenuse over adjacent, and here they'll say adjacent over opposite. So they actually just flip the formulas themselves and then go straight to the answer. Whatever works for you. All right, thanks for watching. See ya.